Hello and welcome to episode 12 of the Texas Rangers franchise here in MLB 23 The Show. In this episode, we will be handling the draft and all-star weekend along with some trade ideas I want to float out there. And that'll be basically it. Uh, very little gameplay in this episode, but the next episode will be the trade deadline and the rest of July. And it'll be more of a normal episode. But I wanted to take some time to show off our all-stars and our future stars as we have Cole Wynn up to a 72 overall, which is pretty exciting. Um, he's actually kind of one of the top trade candidates I have in our farm system. We also have Emerson Ash on the bench for the future stars. Uh, he's down in double A right now. He was one of our draft picks last season. Uh, Luke Voigt on the future stars team, 33 years old. Uh, that made me laugh. But besides that, that was the future stars lineup. I didn't want to play anything in the future stars since we didn't have that many players on the team. But then it was time for the draft. So this was the first year that I did the scouting for this draft. And we narrowed it down to a few players. I got William Wiley out of Tennessee, 18 years old, 6'3". Uh, looks like he's going to project as a high contact guy. Decent speed, good fielding. And the power's there too, 78 to 80 on the high end. Um, he was 100% scouted, which may be more confident in those uh, projections. Brady Compost was another guy I was really interested in. Uh, his draft rank for us was 12th, and in the MLB he was 20th. Uh, he had really, really good contact numbers, but I assume he'll be gone before it is our turn to draft. We do draft at 21 overall, and uh, Rolando Anderson is a shortstop, uh, just a contact guy, pretty good fielder as well. He'll probably be there in the second round for us, and uh, Kyle Worth looking to draft him in the third-ish round. And uh, Peter Lombardo, I thought was weird. He was not drafted in the big board. He was like 14th on ours, so I was going to take a shot at him later if he was going to be there. With Wiley, the thing that made me a little apprehensive about drafting him was how low our, our scouts had him rated. I think he was like 33rd, and so that scared me a little bit. But, but I think with his projections and how young he is, I think he could actually turn out to be pretty good. Here's another look at Compost. I think if Compost falls to us... He'll be my first option uh, over Wiley, but we'll just have to see how it goes. We joined the draft here at the 10th pick. Michael Ransom just got drafted, the third base. I, I was looking at him. I liked his name. I thought it was cool. The Marlins take Rodney Tate, a first base prospect. 20 years old from junior college a good fielder it looks like but this is where the arizona diamondbacks would take our guy brady compost and so now it's just a sit and wait game and hope wiley falls to us at 21 look at those projections he has the super high contact with pretty decent power as well now we hope wiley falls to us and grades out as projected and we are back at pick 20 Wiley still there and the Cardinals go Tom Yang a left fielder so Wiley is there for us to draft one good look at him before we take him and that is who we ended up drafting the first round he hits left handed which is nice and his overall might be kind of high too he's 18 years old uh, so he'll start in double A most likely and now in the second round there is Worth and Rolando Anderson out of South Carolina he's only 5'8 which is kind of insane, but uh, projects to have good contact, and uh, he's pretty fast, too. So we draft Rolando Anderson in the second round, and we sim ahead again, and Worth is right there. So I just went and drafted him. Uh, by the third round, a lot of the top guys are gone. You're kind of just taking shots in the dark anyways. So now the draft is done, and we will just try to sign those guys over the next couple of weeks. And you guys get to see their ratings in the August episode. And uh, no Rangers in the home run derby, unfortunately. I was actually really hoping there would be. O'Neill Cruz is a Dodger, which took me by surprise. So a quick look at the team before the All-Star break is official. 293 from Marcus Simeon, 303. Seager, 289 from Nathaniel Lowe. Our top three guys are all All-Stars. Uh, Garcia and Young, I think we're just on the outside of making it. Heim didn't make the All-Star game, unfortunately. 
And Gallo has really turned around. He's hitting 222 now with 16 home runs at the halfway point. So, uh, you know, it's it's a hard decision because he plays good defense and he's only under contract for the rest of the season. He has an 820 OPS. It's actually not that bad. Uh, I just feel like we're so close to being like the team to beat and I really want to get us over the edge. And so if that is with an extra bat, then I, I really want to push for that. But the rotation looks really good. Eovaldi is really the only one struggling. Uh, they put Hernandez in when Leiter got hurt. But Leiter's been awesome since being called up after his first start. He's a 1.99 ERA now. As we look at, at the halfway point leaders for awards, uh, just the usual suspects. We got Craig Kimbrell in the lead for reliever of the year. And uh, Cristobal Campillo for uh He's second for Rookie of the Year. He was the guy we were looking at to draft last season. As uh, we're going to go look back at him, I had to do a double take when I watched this. And yeah, 74 overall at 22. That's really good. He We took Henry Cabrera instead of him. And uh, Henry Cabrera is doing decent. He is in double A right now. Um, he'll probably get called up to triple A before the end of the season. Emerson Ash hitting 317. I don't know why they put him on the bench. Uh, they do stuff like that all the time, and I don't know why. But Henry Cabrera, 75 overall. He is progressing as well. Um, we just don't have a spot for him on the big league team right now. And that's part of the conversation I want to have with all these prospects is we have a bunch of prospects that won't have a spot on the major league team for a couple of years. And I think if this is our year to really push for it, we, we trade a bunch of them and get someone huge like, well, you're going to see at the end of this video, I have a few people in mind. But we'll save that till the end. Like, we have Acuna, who plays second base. And, like, Marcus Simeon's going to be our second baseman for the next at least five seasons, I would assume. Foscue's already 25, and his potential went down last year, so his value went down, unfortunately. But he's still a pretty good prospect at 26. He's progressing really well with the plus 10 contact to lefties, which I thought was crazy. But we have so many good prospects, and our farm system is elite. And Evan Carter here on the I.L., He's going to be our everyday center fielder in the very near future. So I don't know what that means for Laoti or Ezekiel Duran, but one of them is going to have to go if it's not Adolis Garcia, who might regress by then. So we have a lot of uh, big decisions upcoming. And I'm pretty excited to get to that point, actually. But uh, right now, we're actually going to hop into the All-Star game. We had four All-Stars in total, two starters, one being Corey Seager and the other being Marcus Simeon. So our middle infield starting the All-Star game is pretty sweet. Uh, it brought us back to T-Mobile, which is weird because the All-Star game in this season, like so next year in real life, will be in Texas, which is going to be sick. Um, but Spencer Strider on the hill against Corey Seager, who's hitting 303. Corey Seager, by far our best player, uh, the most consistent player in everything. He's been awesome to have. Hitting second and playing shortstop every single day. And Spencer Strider will deliver the 2-0. It's fouled off into the third base bleachers. There is a runner on second and the AL is already up by one. We're just going to focus on our guys. But the AL looking good so far. As a 2-1 coming from Spencer Strider. One of the better pitchers in the league. That's crushed! Deep center field! Corey Seager! In the All-Star game has given the AL a 3-0 lead here in the first inning. 412 feet off one of the best pitchers in baseball and Spencer Strider. You love to see it. Now Simeon comes up in the bottom of the second. He's hitting 293 this year. Spencer Strider still in the game as Simeon will pop it up. Shallow right field. And he'll be retired by Fernando Tatis. And there is Craig Kimbrell celebrating the win in the dugout. We actually had five All-Stars. I forgot Craig Kimbrell was an All-Star. But Corey Seager does get All-Star Game MVP. He went four for four. Surprised he got four at-bats. But he hit two home runs and a double, which definitely warrants an MVP award. Before this episode ends, I did want to throw out some trade ideas I had. Um, like I've been talking about with all these prospects, I definitely want to ship some of them. I don't know if it's going to be for a bat or for an arm, but part of me thinks another bat would just make our offense one of the best of all time and uh, really push us over the edge to where we're not the favorite in the AL West. We're the favorite in baseball. 
And so I was just looking at some of the prospects, uh, what we could package together, and here are a few of my ideas. The most realistic option of the three is Paul Goldschmidt of the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, he's 36 years old. He's a free agent at the end of the year. So we'd only have to give up Acuna, Foscue, and Wynn to get him. He's having a good year, 276, 14 home runs. The hitting is still there. Uh, he can play first base, so Nathaniel Lowe doesn't have to play there, and I think he's a pretty realistic option. Another option is Juan Soto of the San Diego Padres. The Padres are kind of competing right now, but he is a free agent at the end of the year. He's hitting 269. He's only 25 years old. Uh, so he would take a lot more to get. Uh, it'd be Acuna, Ash, Foscue, and Wynn to get him. So it'd be quite a bit of our top 50 prospects. But I think for a 25-year-old Juan Soto, he is a rental though. So it's something to think about. I think the most intriguing is Vladimir Guerrero Jr. of the Blue Jays. Uh, he's only 25 and he has an extra year of team control. So he would be by far the biggest package we would have to trade uh, Acuna, Ash, Foskey, Wynn, White, and Ezekiel Duran. I think a haul like that is what keeps me from doing this trade, but Vladimir Guerrero Jr. might be the only guy that's worth it out of these three. So let me know what you think about these trades. Uh, if you have any other suggestions, let me know, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Peace.